Welcome to the Create Today podcast. This show is all about how you can create the life that you love one day at a time. I'm your host, Karen Stanley, and my beautiful guest today is Stephanie Clymer. Thank you, Stephanie, for being here today. Thank you, Karen. I'm so excited. It's like it's like getting to chat with a girlfriend and record it at the same time. I know. And then help some people that may have gone through some of the same struggles that you are. And if we can just help one person, then I just, that that's all that matters to me. Oh, and that was literally my, I was walking in the dark this morning and I, that was my prayer. I was like, God, oh, just give me the words. And if one person is like, that's what I needed to hear. Oh my gosh. I say that all the time. God, thank you for the right words and the right timing and the right tone. <laughs> that's what Ooh, I, mean. I should add tone to my prayer. <laughs> thank you for that advice. I'm trying to like, you know, say things nicely. And sometimes it just does not come across the way that I want it to. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> so, so I want to hear a little bit about your journey as an entrepreneur. And um, when did you open your shop? When does the f- when did you start? So I have kind of a. I started out with a really small minded goal. To be completely honest, I opened in two thousand six. I was twenty five, and I like to say I was too young and dumb to know it might not work. I am in Orange County, California, which is like the Mecca of boutiques and shopping. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even married at the time. There were 8 million boutiques. One of my best girlfriends who's five years older was pregnant. And I was like, that's it. I am going to open a maternity boutique because that's what doesn't exist yet. Ah, I got a small business loan. Um, My mom had to co-sign it because I didn't have collateral. I didn't own a home. I had nothing. And I was... Talk about you don't know what you don't know. But honestly, Karen, my goal in starting a boutique was I can have a small business and then I can get married and have children and I'll be able to be there a little bit and be home a little bit. Like I wasn't, I wasn't looking to be this business owner creating an impact for other people. I just wanted to create a teeny tiny thing and a lifestyle. That's what I thought then. And so it began. Wow. And then when did that change? How did it go the first couple of years? You know, so 2006 is an interesting time to open because you're just kind of starting. And then the 2008 financial crisis hit. And I got in this mindset when that happened of, well, at least our sales aren't decreasing, which is a really dangerous place to be, right? It's right. like when you talk about, I always think of the sports analogy. As soon as the team that's winning starts playing defense, they lose. Mm. I lost all my offense. I was like, but well, we're still here. You know, we're, we're not going backwards, but we weren't really making forward movement. Um, and it was kind of just flat for a lot of years and it was okay. You know, it would go up, it would go down, but not like this. It was like, dee, 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 dee. and, um, I got married in that time. I had my first son in 2011. So now I've been in business for five years. I had, I was re-upping my lease. And somebody gave me the advice. I have a family member in commercial real estate. And he said, sign a one-year lease because things are going to get worse before they get better. And you'll be able to negotiate it down again. Well, I signed three years and a year later, I now had a child. And so the financial, it didn't make like what I was doing. Didn't make sense. Like, honestly, if I look back, Karen, I'm like, that was a lot of years of an intense hobby. I mean, I made like enough to contribute to the household, but it wasn't it wasn't a lot. It wasn't enough to go get childcare. You know, it wasn't like, I didn't feel empowered or powerful. I, I had a little bit of part-time employees. I was very reactionary. It wasn't like, it's not like a moment of like a proud entrepreneur when I look back. Yeah. Um, but I had two years left. And so you think I'm six years into the business now. It's like, come on girl, do something. And I thought to myself, if I had signed that one year lease, I would close. And I looked around at the businesses around me and people were shrinking. Everybody kind of had that mindset, all the small businesses. Mm -hmm. And there was one that had doubled in size. They had broken down their wall. And so I went to them and I said, what did you do? And they recommended me to this retail consultant. And I said, all right, I have two years. I either grow this so it makes sense or in two years I'm done. And it was kind of the beginning of, this is fun. 
Oh, really? I have some control. Stop waiting for things to happen for me or to me and the right person to walk. It just was this slow mindset shift mm. of so, like, do something, create what you want. Mm. What did you do differently? I just showed up differently. No more waiting. It was like create events. I started to really analyze every single vendor. Nothing was made with an emotional decision anymore. I started to act like a real business, not just a gal with a little shop ordering what she wants when she wants it. You know, it was just social media was introduced. And so I showed up consistently. I, I got a lot pickier about the women I hired. And then I started listening to my clients. And I slowly stopped carrying maternity. I w- it was a business called Expecting. Hmm. And I was like, I really need to rebrand this because I'm almost a decade in. And a lot of what we carry isn't maternity anymore because my clients were saying, we love it here. I want to come back. So then I would carry non-maternity things. And so they would come back. But for every client, Karen, that would be loyal and come back, they would say, I can't get my neighbor to come in here, even though she loves my clothes because she can't get past the name. I can't get my sister when she visits, you know, because she's like, I'm not shopping at a store called expecting. (laughs) And everybody says, you can't rebrand after a decade. You can't rebrand after a decade. And one night I said, I don't know if you cuss on this show, but F them, you know? And I, I started the rebranding that night. I sent out, I hired somebody to help me and we rebranded in 2016 as shop common thread. Things started to click then. And around 2018, I started on like a self-growth. I was learning a lot. I was, so now I'm like, you know, you look back and you see the commonality, but I didn't know that I was like small-minded and then not so small-minded and then taking control and then surrounding myself with the right people. But somewhere in like 2018 or 2019, I started to, I started more, like my morning routine was growing. So I was, uh, but what was the, um, the moment where you're like, I, I want to, I and mean, what was happening before you're like, Oh, I really want to grow. I really want to learn. You know what, what happened? I want, do you ever, have you ever had a time in your life where it's like, I'm, this is what I wanted, right? Like I'm married. I have this home where I wanted. I have these three kids. I have this business, but there's like in it, like, there's just like a knowing it's not I'm not totally connected to the women I surround myself with. I like them a lot. There's nothing bad to say, but like, I'm not resonating. I'm not, I'm not waking up in the morning, like proud of what I did yesterday, who I was yesterday. How am I contributing to the world? It's so there's like an emptiness. And I think you just have to listen to that. I love that. That's I'm not waking up proud. Yeah. Yeah. And so a little luck, you know, I, you put it in the universe. Mm -hmm. I'm really faith-based and it, the right thing will come to you. And it was like one little book that I went, okay. What was it? Girl, wash your face by Rachel Hollis. I mean, I'm talking, I was the beginner level, Karen. Like I was, and you know what I think is awesome in the space of self-development, you have Rachel Hollis and you have like Eckhart Tolle, right? I mean, I couldn't have started up here with like depth and, and big ideas and, and universal connect. Like I would, I would have been like, I would have fallen asleep. I wouldn't have understood. I would have felt frustrated. So I had to meet myself where I was. Well, I'm only laughing because I'm not even, it's not even funny, really. I mean, she, that, that book and her movement, she's helped millions and millions and millions of women. I really think she has. And I've, you know, much like the first consultant I ever hired. I outgrew him and his advice. Yeah. He was what I needed then, you know, and I, and I think he's probably doing what he helped me do with my business for hundreds of people. And I would recommend him for that reason. hundred percent. But we, our path out, you know, and, and same with self growth and development, I think you're going to outgrow where you begin. But what she did is she said she would write down 10 things every single day that she wanted to happen. Mm. And around 2018 or 2019, I was like, okay, well, I could do that. You know, like I couldn't, when people would say journal, I was like, about what, 
you know, but I could do the basics. I could be like, I'm grateful for these things. And these are the things I want to happen. And my store was 1400 square feet. And in 2016, we rebranded and that was working. And I started to write down the business next door leaves and we take over that space. And I wrote it every day for a year. And every person, I was still with my business consultant. Then he would say, that's corporate owned. It's not going to happen. You have to think of something else. And I'm like, and I would call the landlord and I would say, I, you know, I found out when their lease was up and I was like, if they don't renew, I want first right of refusal. And one day they hung a sign on the door and they said, we're closing. Wow. And that was in the summer of 2019. And you know how people say luck is when preparation and opportunity meet? Yep. This is an example because since I wrote that down every day, I planned how much it would cost me in time and in money. And I was ready when it happened. And it didn't come easily because what I didn't know is our entire building was in escrow. So just getting, if I hadn't been so committed, there were a lot of hurdles along the way that would have scared me off. Mm. but I was, I had written it down for so long. And when you're doing that, when you're writing it down, you're also, don't you think you're kind of planning, Mm. you know, you're doing the work also. And so you're ready. You're not just writing it down going, this is going to happen to me. Well, during the space in which it takes to write it, you're actually visualizing it twice. So it's really like a double, you know, it's, it's like double whammy. You're okay. saying it, you're visualizing it, you're writing it as you're writing it, it like slows your brain down. And then you t- has you time to think about visualizing that exact scenario. And then that's drawing that frequency to you. And I, d- I tell all my clients to write down the goals, your, you know, top five, does, your top three, it doesn't even have to, it doesn't matter how oh, many. Yeah. To physically write them down every day. It's uh, super powerful. And then- I don't love that, Karen, because when people tell you to visualize it's not an easy concept. Like if you're just going to sit there and think, okay, I'm supposed to close my eyes and see my life and your mind wanders. But if you write it, it, it you can do that. You totally can. So that was, and in January of 2020, as luck would happen, we had a store twice the size. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. So good. Great. So you had double the size and then three, two months later, the whole world shuts down. And oh. that's when I knew that the work I had done had been helping me mm. because, and we share a lot of the same mentors in the same space where I began, led me to Ed Milet's podcast. He led me to Andy Frisella's podcast. And I didn't even know they were connected in a business at the time. Mm. It makes sense, right? That they would mention each other, but I would listen to Ed for a lot of like the emotional mindset leadership back then he did a lot of his solo podcasts. Mm -hmm. And then I would listen to Andy for business. Mm -hmm. And then they opened Arate up at the beginning of 2020. And I was like, oh, I'm going to, I had all these plans to go to their summit in April. Well, you know, the world shut down, but I didn't freak out. And I made a plan and I was a good leader. And so I signed up for Arate because I thought if all of those lessons were free and they helped me get here, imagine what I get if I pay to be part of this group. So awesome. It's so true. We don't really realize how we have grown, how much we have changed until we have a roadblock. Or yes. yes. And it's in the way that we act or less reaction or less anxiety, less fear. And it's like, okay. So when, even, even when you think you're not really growing as much as you want, or you're not seeing any specific results, just keep it on, keep on, keep it on because you're, there will be something coming up in the future where you go, oh, I get to see the difference now. I do feel differently. I did react differently. I did think something differently. And that's a really excellent point to bring up. I'm glad you said that. And you know, you don't really see it on the journey. You really don't. It's not like you you write down your gratitude list, right? And maybe you're feeling a little better if you're really a self-aware person. But when you're just starting out, most of us aren't that self-aware and one day is good. And one day is bad because that's life. So it's not like you start this on Monday and then every day forever is easier or better or 
or whatever it is that you're searching for. It's just like this constant. And I mean, obviously you coach people, Karen, so you know, as soon as you get through one hurdle or challenge, there's just another one waiting for you yeah. because now you're, now you're here, you know, and you're seeing different things. So true, but it's so rewarding. Like if anybody's listening, they think of maybe they have a gratitude practice or maybe they would like to start writing down their goals. Just keep doing it. You're not going to feel necessarily any different. Like you said, tomorrow is you're going to be on top of the world because you did gratitude once. It's just a practice. It's, and it does work. And you are growing. You just may not be able to see it. Yes, it's not... Yeah. It's just, you can't look in the mirror and see it, you know, it's, but you have to trust it. And you, I think you have to pay attention. So what I wish I would have known then is to pay attention to the little daily challenges a little bit more and see how you react Mm. because it took like a pandemic for me to go, Oh, cool. This is work. Like, you know, but I'm sure there were plenty of things in those two years. Uh I handled a little bit better that weren't so major. So what did you do? You couldn't go to work. You couldn't open your shop. What'd you do? Uh, I did go to work. We turned our store into a warehouse and we can, so we had an awesome social media following where we really connected with our clients and we have great clients in the community. Mm. So immediately I gave my employees what I could afford to just give them. Then when we knew it was for a while, I said, I think you should put in your notice and collect unemployment if you want to. And most of them, a lot of the women who work for me are moms and they needed to do that. They needed to be home with their family mm-hmm. There were about five who weren't. And they were like, don't make me stay home. And we would show up and the store was twice as big. So we had, you know, at first you didn't know it was like, you go in that corner, but somehow people were still shipping goods. And we pivoted. Like suddenly we were the place for sweatpants and you could get 8 million sweatpants. And then Easter, we were building Easter baskets. We'd never built Easter baskets before, but we had a small children's section. I mean, we were but we would do really fun things. And that was the moment I had a really cool moment during this time because everybody was complaining and everybody was slow. And we were like hustling. I mean, sweating. And those of us who were working, it was all day. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had a moment where that I was with that same consultant. So imagine he worked with a lot of people in retail and our numbers, I mean, I would, I would set these like baby goals. You know, I was like, if we could just pay our rent, cause like they discount you for a, a minute, but you're going to have to pay it back. I mean, you know, you guys, mm-hmm. I'm sure it's the same with your yeah. dealership. Um, What's that? We're so lucky. We, we live in the wild, wild West. We didn't have to shut down. Okay. That's a wonderful. Well, we were for about two months. So, I mean, yeah, it was some businesses did, but they were, we were automotive. So they, we, they allowed us to stay open. Were people buying cars? Yeah. Gosh, thank goodness. Wow. Well, and then they everybody needs service too. But you know, also as you're driving around, sure, lots of less people are driving around, but they still get into accidents. They still get flat tired. Like they cars always have to be serviced, <laughs> as you know. And you right. can't shut down the service departments because be where how are you going to get your car fixed if it breaks down? They have to have their cars. So look, we were lucky, but not all not all dealerships in every state were allowed to stay open. I don't remember here, you know, I'm in a little bit of a California bubble. So in orange County, I mean, everybody wanted to come in and in the beginning, I'm like, I just don't know. I just don't know. So we'll just be here and we'll line up the bags and we'll ship them. But we would just have fun. Like on Fridays, we would give $500 at a favorite restaurant and we would be like, whatever of our clients until that's gone, you know, go get lunch on us. And we would deliver things to people's curbs, but we've had this gift where our e-com business that had always been teeny tiny exploded. Oh. And so then it honestly, when we opened back up, the fact that we were twice as big was a blessing because people felt like there was space, you know, there was still these guidelines. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, people felt like there was, there was space. So some people weren't worried about it, but for those who were, you know, it felt, and we let people try clothes on and they would cut, we had all these new customers Cause they were like, I went to the mall and you're not allowed to try clothes on. And I'm like, make this make sense, but okay. You, you can try them on it at our store. And we ended up 
by the time we reopened, our e-com business was so big. Our business was booming. We had to get a warehouse and an office, a corporate office. It, it was really crazy. It was, it was fast. Wow. It was you know, you talk about how um, personal growth ended up being the result ended up being business growth, huge business growth. Yeah. And right before we started recording, you were telling me you didn't even really realize that could be a result. Personal no. growth. No, when I started the self-development, it was, it's not even Karen. Like I was like, I'm going to go to the library and I'm going to find a book. You know, it popped up on my Kindle. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a plan. There was just, it resonated because I was searching. I just didn't know what I was searching for. So in none of it was for business. It was like this internal, you know, and it's like, my marriage wasn't terrible. My kids were great. Like it, it was for me. And then it's like that whole saying, right? The ships in the harbor, right? Like everything I well, found- I to point out that um, also your circle of friends at the time, um, I wanted you to talk about that because I think some people can relate to that. We love them, but we start to feel maybe not as connected. I want you to, I want you to speak to that again real quick. Yeah. So I was telling you, you know, I had these young children. And so most of my friends were women I met at their schools and all lovely women, but I was, I wasn't feeling connected. I was like, this is it. And like, why is there wine at every play date? And again, it goes, it speaks to waking up proud of who you are, proud of who you are as a mom and a business owner. And a, it was a lot of, um, we should feel guilty. Right. So it's like, when I was at work, I felt bad for not being with my kids. And when I was with my kid, it was like this circle and I needed to get out and just know that's not how you have to feel. And that's not how you have to live and like, take back. I feel like you speak to this so much, take back your control make a plan for your day. Stop saying you feel guilty when you really don't. Mm -hmm. I almost felt guilty for not feeling guilty that I was a working mom. I mean, it was like this weird and there was nothing wrong with any of those women. Mm -hmm. I just didn't go out and go, this is who I look up to. This is who I need in my life. This is what I, I don't really like to go to lunch on a Tuesday. It doesn't fill my cup and that's okay. And it's okay if you love to. Right. But maybe we're not going to be, you know, best friends for our whole life. We're going to be friendly and our kids can like each other and we could support each other. That's totally fine. But I think a lot of people, a lot of us women, as soon as you have a friend and your kids are friends, then you feel, you might feel a little bit guilty for not wanting to spend more time socializing and you'd rather be doing something else. And that, there, you know, sometimes it's like, well, but we used to always go to lunch every Tuesday and have two glasses of wine. And now I, 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 I really just want something different. I don't want to do that. You know, I, I will say, I think, and I wonder if you, you have to be okay with the changes that are going to come and they're not always pleasant. Mm. Um, just naturally shift. And I had a friend look at me point blank and say, we don't invite you anymore. Wow. We don't see you anymore. And I was like, that's fair. That's true. And that's okay. Cause you're right. I, I probably wouldn't go, but I hope it's lovely. And I, I wish I could say it was that easy for me. Like I'm there now, but the first time I heard it, because we have this completely ridiculous human need to be wanted everywhere, even if we don't want to be there. True. So it's like, you got to grow up a little bit and accept to make room, to make room for the people I was hoping to attract. I had to have room. I mm -hmm. had to have space. And I had to start living like that person. Mm -hmm. Like the person you really want to be, the person you're proud of. Yeah. And like, I see this woman over here and I'm thinking, she seems amazing and interesting. And I love what she's doing with her life. And you know what? If you want to be in her circle, you have to be that type of person. Mm -hmm. um, and you really, I think, have to... I think it goes back to writing things down. I think we don't plan enough. Like really people talk a lot about attracting like you do like a person, a, a mate, right? But it's, it's everything. It's the people in your circle. It's the women you serve. Like 
we have to think about who we want to attract and be around. And then we have to start living that life. Yep. And actually, the, to your point, that's a, I have been very intentional. After you attract your dream partner, you don't stop the work. You don't stop the you know, personal development. You don't stop anything. Um, now you have two personalities to figure out and two people with their past traumas to, you know, help work through and so many challenges that it's, it's both, but now you have a team, but then you go on to, okay, what else do I want to attract into my life? And it's funny that you just said that because I remember in 21, I, that was my main intention is to attract really good women, friends, like strong female relationships Cause I was like, oh, I don't really have any girlfriends in and, you know, it's like, and I don't, mm. go out and I don't want to go to lunch on a Tuesday and have a bottle of wine. I, I used to, and I was, that's great. And it was fun. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's great. I'm just like, man, no, I really want to build some friendships and relationships with other entrepreneurs and who kind of, we're doing the same things and we have the same goals and we have the same dreams so that we can help each other. And, and that absolutely happened. And yeah, it does, but you have to. It's almost like lonely on the way. It is. Because you're kind of like, you're making that space. And then you're kind of, I remember when I first started working with a coach and I was like, I don't really just have very many friends who own a business or who, who love business. I don't even care if you own a business, but yeah. love to talk about it. And um, now I'm like, I, that was, I think it was around the same time as you. Mm -hmm. And recently I had an event at my house and I'm like, Alicia and Jamie were there, two of our friends who own businesses. And I was like, oh my gosh, every person I'm introducing you to like is doing something awesome in business. It was crazy. And it was the first time it's to your point. You're not like counting them. So you're not realizing. And suddenly I was like, there are powerful women in my circle. And this is so cool. So cool. And, I love and so it. when you really think about it, don't you feel like two years isn't that long? Like we were both able to create that for ourselves in probably less than two years. I couldn't tell you the exact moment. Yeah. It's not that long in the scheme of life. If you really want it, you put it in the universe and then you start becoming the person that you want to hang out with. And suddenly you're going to wake up and go, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And I don't, I don't hang out with anybody. I used to hang out with five years ago. It's so crazy. I know I don't have many of those friendships either. Um, and I hope that when, like, I hope everybody I always hope that everyone is okay with the change, but you also have to be okay with like, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Yeah. And that's they, where you're at. They just don't want you to change because they love you. Yeah. They love spending time with you. And it's just scary. Randy, if you're yeah. different, well then, oh no, but I'm going to lose my friend. So then they, they don't mean to hold you back, but they want to hold you back because they want you to be the same. They, you want to keep doing the same things that you used to always do. And so yeah, it is a little, it's not the easiest thing in the whole world, but it's nobody died. Everything's really fine. And you know, you bring up change and I think an adaptability and a willingness to change is probably a really key attribute of most entrepreneurs. Mm. And what I'm realizing, especially as I am a leader in my company is most people don't love and embrace change. Well, surely don't. But I do think it's a key characteristic of most entrepreneurs. How are you able to build that skill or that attribute? You know, a lot of people think that it's born. Oh, you either like change or you don't. You're just born that way or you're not. And then I don't, I don't agree. I think a lot of people, they, we all kind of fit somewhere in a, a spectrum and we kind of fluctuate depending on what's going on. But how do you think that, or how could you help somebody with what you've been through help themselves become more resilient and become more adaptable and become more open to change and embracing it more. Oh gosh, I'm going to do my best with this. I will tell you, I think it's important to find what you're really, really inherently great at mm -hmm. and change is something for me that becomes easier than for me. Like I really do think I've always been more willing you're and more, more acceptable to change than most people. Um, However, I am, it's one of the biggest things I coach on with the women in my company because I change fast and I see them go, what is happening? Um, and I think, I mean, part of it is goal setting and deciding what's not working and what you want for yourself. And if you look at that list, honestly, 
you're going to have to write down a couple things that have to change. And if you could just and start small, but if you can be honest with yourself and go, okay, this is what I really, really want. Can I get there if I stay how I am today? But if we can focus on what we're getting, not losing, right? Like I would never say to a woman, you've got to lose all your friends to oh. get, like, that is such a, who would do that? Yeah. Right. But if you focus on what you're getting, you know, I'm, I'm going to gain a lot of confidence in this space that I create for myself. And because I've committed to, and what do you commit to? It's a different journey for everybody. But for me, it was a morning routine, my marriage, my faith, whatever it was. And as you're committing to it and you're opening up this space. So like, really, what are you getting? Mm, I love that. And, um, but also don't start too big. You know, because if we try to, if you're not great with change and you try to change everything, it could be really scary, really hard. And you almost might not want to do it. Right. But just one or two things and they're not all going to work. Because if it is overwhelming, you, you won't, you won't do any of it. So instead 100%. of 14, you're changing tomorrow at 8 a.m., you know, let's just start with one. Yes. And I always tell people, you know, my morning routine wasn't what it is when I started a morning routine. Same. It layers, right? Awesome. And my, uh, every, just everything and how I handle business and the team. That, like, look at your team. It's like, you didn't hire 20, you hired one, then two, then three. It's like, let's, I think realistic change is a great place to start. Like, what it's can awesome. you really do tomorrow and keep up consistently? Because that is what gives you the confidence to take the next step. But if you're constantly making huge changes that you can't stick with, I also think it kind of sets you backwards. It does. Cause it makes you uh, feel depleted and let you just, you just ate away at your confidence. I mean, you exactly. got, and then you're just not going to try, you know, John Astaroff said a really good analogy. It's like, well, how many people could run a marathon tomorrow? You know, there's like one or two, you know, a, he's speaking to like 500 people. Right. And he's like, one or two could, because they're avid runners or whatever. It's like, okay, well, how many people could um, run a marathon next year, a year from today? And a couple, few more, you know, kind of raise their hands. I'm like, well, I guess I could if I really trained. And then really when you break it down, well, how many of you could run a half a mile tomorrow? Everybody can. Mm -hmm. And then if you just go a half a mile for seven days in a row, and then you go one mile for seven days in a row little, literally you could run a, a marathon, a full marathon, three, 365 days. And so I'm really glad that you said that. If you just look at what your goal is, what do you want? What do you desire? What's burning in your chest that you really want in your life? And then, oh, can I really get that? If every single thing stays the same, right? 99.9, 100% .9, of the time, the answer is no. Right. So just that's so great how you said that. You just take I, one little thing. The magic is when you start doing it, you start loving the journey. You do. Like when you start, you go, oh, I love it. Like, it, and that's hard to see if you're not in that journey yet. You're like, I don't like the journey. I want to be here. I want to be there. But, you know, really look back and you've had a big goal and you get there. And it's like cool for a minute, a day, a week, whatever. But human nature is, is in that, like doing the work is in the doing, right? It's, it's in the, you're creating something, you're building something actually more dopamine is released when you're actually making progress than is released when you accomplish it. And that's the reason you get I to the goal. Hearing that. Cool. Yeah. Yay. All right. Now, what are we going to do? <laughs> I know. I know. And I am, do you do Enneagram? Stuff. Huh? Well, oh, okay. So it gives you like your number and your personality. Anyways, I'm an achiever. You're probably an achiever because you're saying what's next. Oh, oh yeah. And um, not everyone is like a what's next. And right. so, but I do think we're all in pursuit of our next best self. Mm -hmm. And if you are, that's how you can create the most amount of dopamine and joy in your life. Okay. Just any, any progress toward anything scientifically proven now, which is even cooler. And so here's what, where I would say you just have to trust us if you're listening and you're not, is <laughs> you'll pick, let's say you pick that marathon. Everything else in your life will get better along that year as well. Mm. 
It really will. And it doesn't make sense to say it. Like, why would you get more sales if you're in sales, right? Why would you be able to connect with your partner better if that's what you're looking for? But the other things, but because you're just doing one, because if you try to change it all at once, it's too much, the other things will get better. They will. And then, and then maybe pick that next one that you're like, oh, this year I'm focusing on this, right? And it's, it's your relationship and you're giving it, you know, 45 minutes of alone time twice a week or whatever your like baby goals, but that relationship will already be a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Because it, it doesn't make, like, it doesn't make sense when you say it. Why? When I'm running a marathon, it just will. I don't know. Because your beliefs change. Because when you are uh, making progress, baby goals, and you're accomplishing on them, your beliefs are changing about yourself. Okay. That's changing how you feel, of how you show up. Because I just did that. I just ran for it one half of a mile. Damn, I did it. And so then the belief, then it's also, steam, you know, roll, it's like, it snowballs into, oh, what else can I do? Now I believe that I can. And so I am going to set one more other baby goal because your beliefs change about yourself. I, it's so true. I'm so glad you said that. It's really, um, again, it goes back to taking back your power. It's really empowering to know that if you want something to change, let's say in six months time, you can make that happen. Mm-hmm. What are you willing to do to make it happen? Yeah. And just be really clear, crystal clear about it and make it achievable. Make it, I know, I believe I can do this. Some, um, some things are, you know, if you, I'm sure you read the habit loop and the, um, uh, the habit book, uh, some, it could be, I will wake up at, if you've been waking up at eight, I'm going to wake up at seven fifty. It can be literally that easy. I can do that. Okay. I, I can't wake up at four and go to the gym. That's scary. Uh, you know, I, that's overwhelming. That's too big of a leap. Let's just start with 10 minutes earlier. And then was it Ben Newman? Somebody says that mm. back it up by 15 minutes. So if you have a goal of, you know, if you're an 8 a.m. and you're like, I want to get up at six every day. Nope. 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. And it's, Maybe it wasn't him. I don't know. You know, when you read so many books, you get all their awesome advice all mixed together. Who said what? Yeah. Yes. But I do believe that you're going to do like to your point, 10 minutes, 15 minutes and do it for a week or two. Don't, but imagine where you'll be in six months. It's hard to imagine where you'll be in six months. I know. You have to do some one little tiny thing every day. I know. And you do, you have to, you do have to, as you're manifesting and visualizing and dream, you do have to commit to the work. Yeah. And I don't think that people always like that part of the news. <laughs> I know I don't. <laughs> I want it now. Like, oh, okay. That's going to be, you know, and it's the hard part is doing the small thing consistently over and over and over again. Cause if you just said to somebody, you set your alarm 15 minutes earlier, well, that doesn't sound that bad, mm-hmm. but do it every day no matter what. And then the rewards are so great. So, uh, but it's, it's a long time. You know, one of the things I'm most grateful for Rachel Hollis is I didn't read her books, but I went to her business um, conference, which was in Charlotte, North South Carolina, no Charleston. Okay. Okay. And one of my favorite places is Folly beach, which is right on the, you know, it's a little Island outside of Charleston. Gorgeous. And so I was like, oh, I really want to go. And she had Ed, Ed Milet was speaking and Jesse Hitler was speaking. She had the greatest wow. life. Yeah. It was everyone. It was incredible. I was like, yeah, I really want to go see all these speakers and um, let's do it. I think it was six years ago or seven, quite a, a few, you know, quite a bit ago. But she talked about her journey to her overnight success. She said, it's so funny. People literally say Hey, so tell us about your overnight success. Let me tell you about my overnight success. So back in 2007, I have a job working for this corporate, you know, you, 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 there is no such thing. And it really, for, for her to literally year by year by year, talk about how she got from working for somebody else to starting a blog, to starting her own company to now she, you know, at that point she had, you know, 45 or 50 employees And, um, it took 15 years. She's like, it was a 15 year overnight success. And that's true 
of everyone. And so it's another thing I'm truly grateful for her because she said, my job is funding my dream. So if anybody's sitting here and they don't have a business or maybe they want to have a business someday, you know, they are working for someone else or they would like to start a new career. It's, it's not, it's a 15 year overnight success. <laughs> is it ever? It is. You, and you never, you never, like, I hate that whole, like I've made, you never made it. No matter what. Right. And I remember listening to her around that time. And it was like the time she had to spend away from her family to promote her book. Like you never made it. Everything comes with a cost and like it all. That's why I think you really have to think about what you want. Yep. And make sure, because do you ever all write things down, right? My five key items for the day. And sometimes there's one that I like rarely do. And I have to go, do you really want that? Like, I have to really ask myself that question because you keep not doing this thing. Mm -hmm. So is that goal that you wrote down? And sometimes the answer is like, no, I don't. And so you have to shift, but sometimes the answer is yes. And you have to go, then you better get to, you know? So I think like constantly assessing what we want. And it's, it comes down to being able to be really honest with ourselves. So true. And so as far as this whole journey that I, I also think it's an excellent point. You never made it. You're never going to make it. Um, Cause you're, if you do, then you're sitting there and you're, fin- you're done. Like, what are you, what are you going to do after that? If you quote unquote, have this idea or this mindset that I'm going to make it, and this X, Y, Z means I made it. Then what are you going to do after that for the rest of your life? <laughs> and most people who, let's say you look up to them and you're like, they made it. Most of them start back over somewhere because they make it. And they're like, well, that was boring. Or, you know, I had fun for a month or two or a year. I mean, whatever it is. Yeah. And then they're like, well, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah. To retire and have money and fly, whatever. And it sounds like glamour, but it's like, it's to your point. It's the, it's the journey. It's the, all that dopamine was in the doing. hundred uh, percent. And I, I think it's, was it Ed that says, what am I going to do? Golf nine days a week. <laughs> right? right. But don't you love, I love when people I look up to and way ahead of me, tell me that okay. because that's something I wouldn't have believed or known, but I've heard it so much now. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so what's your what are you going to do Steph? Because the goal can't be to be done at 50. Yeah. And do what? And do what? And I'm so grateful. I really think if we listen, there's so much free, amazing advice. It's true there, but we have to really listen. And, um, it's not like the advice, it's like pay $30 and you're going to live my life forever, right? Like it sounds so good to be true. Like the people who have really done something, they'll tell you how to do it. They'll tell you what the cost is. And by cost, I mean, emotional, you know, time, what they've, what they've said no to, to say yes to like, people will tell you, we just don't always want to hear it. Mm -mm. We want it to be instant. Um, I love that. So how else do you think, or is there anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up? Cause we're talking about how it was surprising to you that your personal growth and professional, you, you working on yourself resulted in massive business growth. And so before we wrap up, I just want to see if there's anything else you wanted to talk, speak to about that, any other insights or anything else from your journey that, um, maybe was surprising. You know, not, well, I guess this is surprising, maybe not so much surprising, but I'm not sure that everybody's listening to this maybe is an entrepreneur, right? Versus just somebody looking for more. And if this is important to you and you are working for somebody, I think find somebody who believes in growth and wants to help you grow. Because the coolest thing I've been able to do is provide this opportunity for the women I say women, cause we're just, it happens to be all women who work for me, mm-hmm. um, in my company. And that is like the next best thing to doing it yourself. Mm-hmm. And so you're investing a lot of money and time into them and their self-growth. But remember 
self-growth leads to other growth. And if that is important to you and you're not owning your own company, you can find a lot of companies nowadays who really believe in this. Mm -hmm. Then you can, now you're double dipping at work, you know, maybe that growth is leading to growth at home for you. Like this can go, for me, it went personal to business, but it could also go the other way. Excellent point. I love that. Because then you have the opportunity to pay pay it forward. And almost everybody who has grown and they're working on themselves and they almost everyone wants to pass it along. They want to help others feel better, do better, achieve their goals because they want everybody to feel like this. Don't you? It's like, oh, I want everyone to know what this feels like and to have this kind of power and to go, this is what I want and I'm going to create it. Yes. And the belief in yourself that you can do it. Yes. I want everybody in my life and that I know to be able to have that. Me too. I really want, I, I, that's the thing that kills me the most, I think, is that somebody who just does, they, they have a a, a dream and a talent and a skill and a, a, you know, a huge goal and they don't think they can do it. And so they just freeze and I just, it kills me. And I want everybody to have the life that they want and that they truly love. It's not going to be rainbows and sunshines once you own a business oh my gosh you're gonna have a lot of things to figure out but everything is figure outable it's like one of my favorite sayings yeah I love that one yeah it's so great for Leo right yes I love it I never actually read her book I listened to her on a on a podcast I was like that's brilliant that was the the name that's so funny I didn't read it either but it is it's such a true and in yeah. I don't know. I love it. We align on so many things, Karen. This was really fun. Um, you're awesome. And you gave us so much great, uh, so much good content. I just so many gems came out of this. I'm, I'm jotting down notes so I can make sure I put them in the show notes and I'm really grateful for you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you. And have a happy Thanksgiving. Oh yeah. Well, we're recording this the day before Thanksgiving. So Oh, okay. that's true. It's going to come out after. So I'm, <laughs> it'll be like I'm messing with your stuff. I'm messing with your timeline. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. Um, tell people how they can find you and your shop. And it's so cute and beautiful. Everything you have is so amazing. Oh, thank you. So on Instagram, my personal brand is shop girl stuff. Um, and my business brand is um, shop common thread OC. I love it. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you, listeners. Anybody who is here listening and watching, God bless you. And just remember that you can create the life that you want. Just take it one day at a time. Bye. Bye. Just going to stop the recording.